Good afternoon, and welcome to this Mass of Ordination of Scott Daniel Patronus to the Order of Deacon. The order of today's liturgy is found in your worship aid. Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. It is a great day for the Diocese of Duluth. As we are gathering here, the people of God, to be able to witness an ordination to the diaconate, Today, we lift Scott up in our prayers in a very powerful and in a very real kind of way. We welcome in a special way a Bishop Bentecourt, who is joining us from Hartford, Connecticut, a mentor to Scott, a formator of Scott, familiar to many of us from his years in the St. Paul, Minneapolis area and at the seminary. We also welcome Father John Gallus from the seminary as well, another significant formator in Scott's life. We welcome the priests who are joining us today the deacons and deacon's wives who are joining us today, men and women religious of our diocese, the lay people of the diocese, those who are joining us by way of live stream, you are important to us. But most of all, we welcome today Scott's family. And so we welcome Dan and we welcome Susan in a very special way. We welcome Tony and Christopher and Aaron and Gina and all of the family and friends who are gathered. For truly on this day, a great grace will be given to us in this ordination. But before we might embrace the fullness of that grace, let us pause for a moment to acknowledge our sins as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask this Mary of the Virgin, all of you, Jesus, the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy upon us all, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their sisters and brothers, grant, we pray, that this your servant, whom you graciously chose today for the office of deacon, may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, 
and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you, a prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Ah, Lord God, I said, I know not how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord answered me, Say not, I am too young. To whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord extended his hand and touched my mouth, saying, See, I place my words in your mouth. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one Spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for the building up the body of Christ, until we attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The word of the Lord. according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The Lord Jesus appointed 72 other disciples whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves, carrying no money bags, 
no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. And to whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this household. If a peaceful, peaceful person lives here, there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let Scott Daniel Patternis, who is to be ordained a deacon, come forward. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain this man, our brother, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know him to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that he has been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose this man, our brother, for the order of the diaconate. Thanks be to God. Scott, I would never ask you to do something that I've not done myself. So I decided two weeks ago that I would go through this process of ordination to get ready for your day today. <laughs> it's hard to believe, and I don't know if there's another diocese in the United States that can make the claim that in a very short period of time, we will ordain a deacon, a priest, and a bishop. What a great blessing that is to our diocese. Praise be God for that great blessing. Give me an amen. amen. Now, some of you might be saying, wow, you've only known Scott for two weeks, and here you are doing his ordination to the diaconate. But Scott, I think that our relationship goes back a lot farther than these two weeks, even though we may not have known it at the time. Because you see, both of us have been coaches for high school wrestling. That's a special bond. That's a special unity. And as we both had that experience, even though you may have had your team, I had my team, you had your state, I had my state, the fact of the matter is a bond that we share has been being coaching high school wrestling, which there are many a story that I'm sure that we can share later on. I also believe that this call to Scott, to the diaconate, started three generations ago. And it's not by chance that we're here today. After all, your grandpa's name is Daniel. Your dad's name is Daniel. 
your middle name is Daniel. I think the Holy Spirit said, I got to have a Daniel sitting on this seat as bishop to do the ordination today to keep all of the Daniels in alignment. A special hello to Grandpa Daniel, who is joining us online. But the ties which bring us together today, Scott, are timeless. The command of Jesus to serve, that you and I, Scott, have come into this world not to be served, but to serve. It is that common mission and ministry that we have shared together long before this diaconate ordination today that makes us one. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. Beloved brothers and sisters, since this our son, who is your family member and friend, is now to be advanced to the order of deacons, consider carefully the nature of the rank in the church to which he is about to be raised. Strengthened by the gift of the Holy Spirit, he will help me as his bishop and his priest in the ministry of the word, of the altar, and of charity, showing himself always to be a servant to all. As a minister of the altar, he will proclaim the gospel, prepare the sacrifice, and distribute the Lord's body and blood to the faithful. Furthermore, it will be his duty at my direction to teach believers and unbelievers alike and to instruct them in the teachings of the church and to draw them closer to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He will preside over public prayer, administer baptism, assist at and bless marriages, bring viaticum to the dying, and conduct funeral rites. Consecrated today by the laying on of hands that comes down to us from the apostles and bound more close, closely to the service of the altar, he will perform works of charity for me or with his pastor. With the help of God, he is to go about these duties in such a way that you will recognize in Scott that he is a disciple who has encountered the Lord along the way and that as the Lord's disciple, he has taken to heart the command of Jesus, we have not come into this world to be served, but to serve. Scott Daniel, you are about to be raised to the order in Jesus Christ of the diaconate. The Lord himself has set the bar high as he provided the best example of all of what it means to serve in the washing of feet. As he himself has done, Scott, now you should do. As a deacon, that is, as a minister of Jesus Christ who came among us, disciples as one who serve, do the will of God from your heart, serve the people in love and joy as you would the Lord. I believe that your experiences in life have prepared you well for this charge of Jesus and the church to serve. As a wrestling coach and as a wrestler, you know discipline, discipline, discipline is everything. And so as a deacon, it is no different. Be disciplined in your preparations for the celebrations of the sacraments that have been entrusted to you, precious gifts that have been given to us by Jesus Christ, that we might receive the very grace of God's life, God's love, God's mercy, and God's joy. With a pastoral heart, faithfully follow the ritual prescriptions as presented by the liturgical norms and laws, always with the intent of presenting the fullness of the Paschal mystery. Be disciplined in preparing your homilies, be open to the Holy Spirit as you ponder the Holy Scriptures and their connection to the circumstances of the lives of those you will serve. There is no place for winging it when it comes to preaching the Word of God. In living a celibate life, be disciplined. Know the celibacy is a sign of pastoral charity as well as a source of spiritual fruitfulness in the world. You will free yourself more completely for the service of God and others and minister more effectively in the work of spiritual rebirth. And finally, be disciplined in being a model and inspiration to all of the people of God to remind each one of us that by virtue of baptism, we are called to serve. Not only has your life experience as a wrestling coach provided you an insight as to what it will mean to be a deacon, but your family has provided you another great experience at the resort. And so at the resort, you've had to pitch in, you've had to help, 
In a certain way, you became a carpenter. You became a builder in so many ways. And as a builder, you know that the most important thing to putting up one of those cottages or one of those cabins was to make sure there was a strong foundation. For if you build a great cabin on a weak foundation, it will collapse. Build it on a strong foundation, it lasts forever. This call to the diaconate, this call to charity, this call to serve is the foundation of all that you will do in ministry, all that you will do in the mission that God has entrusted to you as a deacon. It's not as though, oh, this is what I'm going to do my transitional year before I'm ordained a priest, that I'm going to be about diaconia, and it's kind of like a checklist. When I get done with this diaconate, I got that done. Now it's time to move on. God pray. Or we pray to God that you would be ordained a priest. No, this is the foundation for everything. Even as you are preparing today to receive your dalmatic, to be clothed in your call to service, I am wearing a dalmatic as well. Forty years later as a priest, and now in my first weeks as a bishop, I wear the dalmatic to remind me of the foundation that was given to me and to all who are gathered here the day that I was ordained a deacon and called to live a life of diaconia. And finally, in your experience of life, you've had some powerful experiences of healing, powerful experiences that drew you closer to Jesus Christ as the healer in your life. So powerful that because of that experience, you are here today. It drew you so close to Jesus that you want to serve God's people, many times extending the healing Jesus to others. Never forget that experience in your life. It has guided you to this day. It will guide you every day. In closing, Scott Daniel, every diaconate ordination that I do in the Diocese of Duluth will be of great significance, but you will always have a special place in my heart, for you will be the first deacon that I ever ordained to the diaconate as the 10th bishop of this diocese. Together, let us embrace, express, and embody our common mission given to us by Jesus Christ himself to not be served but to serve. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. Dear son, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience, as the apostle urges, and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? Do you resolve to keep forever this commitment to remain celibate as a sign of your dedication to Christ the Lord for the sake of the kingdom of heaven in the service of God and man? Do you re resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life, and in keeping with the spirit and what is required of you, to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God, and indeed for the whole world. Do resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ, of whose body and blood you are a minister at the altar. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment.
My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on this, his servant, whom, in his kindness, he raises to the sacred order of the diaconates. Please kneel. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy Angels of God, Pray for us. Saint John the Baptist. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul. Pray for us. Saint Andrew. Pray for us. Saint John. Pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene. Pray for us. Pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Antioch. Pray for us. Saint Lawrence. Pray for us. Saint Joshua and Saint Felicity. Pray for us. Saint Agnes. Pray for us. Saint Gregory. Pray for us. Saint Augustine. Pray for us. Saint Athanasius. Pray for us. Saint Basil. Pray for us. Saint Martin. Pray for us. Saint Benedict. Pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic. Pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier. Pray for us. Saint John Vianney. Pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena. Pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus. Pray for us. O holy men and women, saints of God. Pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained and faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless this chosen man. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify this chosen man. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate this chosen man. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. 
Christ graciously hear us. Christ graciously hear us. Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify your blessing, this man we present, for in our judgment we believe him worthy to exercise sacred ministries through Christ our Lord. Amen. Stand. Draw near, we pray, almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged, but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provision for every age, as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the church, his body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. And as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve your name. And so in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at the table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favor on this servant of yours, who will minister at your holy altar, and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon him, Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, that he may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the work of the ministry. May there abound in him every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of your spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in his conduct so that by the example of his way of life, he may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a clear conscience, may he remain strong and steadfast in Jesus Christ so that by imitating on earth your son who came not to be served but to serve, he may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated.
soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh cry out for the living. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Peace be with you. With your spirit.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Thank you. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice we may be filled with a spirit of humility and zeal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design was pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priest of the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so with all of the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As in exaltation, we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for our very help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Daniel our Bishop, with the order of bishops, this your servant, who has been ordained today as minister for the church, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summon before you. In your compassion, oh, merciful Father, gather yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleased, who are pleasing to you at the passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Christ our Lord, for whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, 
we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. just and the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord, to be pondered by all who delight in them. May we always serve one another. Majestic and glorious his word justice stands firm for hell. 
forever. He has given us a memorial of his wonders. The Lord is gracious and merciful.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servant, whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your kingdom and the salvation of believers, he may be found faithful as a minister of the gospel, of the sacraments and of charity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us as we pray our diocesan vocation prayer located in your program. Almighty Father, we thank you for your to the and Help us to be generous in our response to your call. Choose from our homes those who are needed for your work and strengthen us with the courage to say yes and to follow you. Help us as a diocese, as a parish, as a saint, to encourage the foster vocations to the priesthood, permanent advent, and consecrated love. We commend our prayers to our patroness, Mary, the Queen of the Rosary, and ask this to Jesus Christ our Lord. At the conclusion of Mass, please join us for a light reception located across 4th Street next to the Holy Rosary School building. As we have properly done so, we have acknowledged Scott today with a great prayer and a heart of thanksgiving. But I think it's only right that we also acknowledge you, Susan, and you, Dan, today as well. You have raised your son in such a good way. You have accompanied him along the way. He is here today because of you and because of his family. And so I would pray that God shower his blessings upon you today as the giver of this great gift. And I know that you will continue to accompany him in the days that are ahead as well. And so let us acknowledge Susan and Dan with a round of applause. Thank you. By the way, they have announced me, asked me to announce there still are some cabins available at the resort if you'd like to. <laughs> the Lord be with you. 
May God, who called you to the service others in his church, give you great zeal for all, especially the afflicted and the poor. Amen. Amen. May who, who has entrusted you with the preaching of the gospel help you as you live according to his word to be its sincere and fervent witness. Amen. May who, he who has appointed you a steward of his mysteries make you an imitator of his son Jesus Christ and a minister of unity and peace in the world. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.